Well, a new segment that we've been doing uh, lately, and one that I love watching, and uh, hopefully other people do too, is, Eric, what's in your camera bag? All right. Well, let me grab it. One second. It's right next to me here. Tim, how much trouble are you in with your mouth? Wife. Oh, well, see if I can... enough. It's all right. Wow, look yeah, at that bag. Right. Yeah, that's taking a bag. my tripod off. Yeah, this is my uh, Satori uh, EXP F-Stop bag. Uh, absolutely love it. One of the things I love about this bag is that uh, it's got the zipper on the back side. So I drop it off and I can uh, instantly access... See if I can get this high enough yeah. <laughs> without dropping my gear. All right. Can't really see it. But, uh, I, no, uh, I can get an idea for it. So how much How much does that weigh? Oh, there's your camera. Yeah. How yeah. much does that weigh when you have all the gear in it? You know, it's not too bad. It's usually between 30 and 40 pounds. <laughs> okay. Not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's when I go backpacking that it's really a killer. Then I'm up in the range of 60 to 70 pounds. Wow. I would need a four-wheeler. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's kind of. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, some port service doesn't allow that. Well, let's see. First thing I've got, obviously, is my camera. And I'm using the uh, D810, and this is with my uh, 24 to 70 lens. Okay. This is my go to lens, at least the starting point. And then I'll, from there, I'll either go up or down. Any filters uh, in, on that? Like. No, I don't really uh, use any filters. Occasionally, like if I'm in the Pacific Northwest and it's wet foliage, I'll use a polarizer. But uh, Generally not. I would say that's about the only time I ever use any filters on it. Okay. And then I've got my uh, uh, 14 to 24, you know, the big... Look at that thing. Big old... Uh, wide lens and this is when i'm right up close to the mountains and they're towering over me and it gives me a chance to uh, include them in in the frame a little bit better and bring some great foreground in to add some interest and then my obviously my 70 to 200 it's nice little little lens not too bad um sometimes awesome i have a tamaron 150 to 600 in the bag but i didn't put that in today okay that's a monster lens. But, yeah. uh, let's see. What else do I have? Um, this pouch is my first aid bag. I put everything in colored bags so that they're really easy to find. And so all my first aid gear is in a red bag uh, so that I, one quick glance, I know exactly what it is. And in here, besides the first aid equipment, I have extra batteries, you know, a rope, a knife, and... Um, uh, you know, a bivy sa a uh, sort of a bivy sack that uh, holds the heat in. I mm -hmm. forgot what you call those. Color coding is a great idea, and if you're going to be backpacking like you are, having a uh, emergency kit is a must. Yeah, I wouldn't dare go out in the wilderness for uh, any distance without a, a really good um, first aid kit and the knowledge of how to use it. You know, right. Uh, I, I highly recommend taking a wilderness uh, first responder course if you get the opportunity. And which, which, great point, because that may that that emergency bag may not just be for you; it may be for you to provide assistance, right? More often than not, that's what I found is, yeah, <laughs> yeah helping other people you find on the trail. Yeah. And so having a little knowledge about what to do is 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 great. Great. Then I have another little yellow bag, and in this bag, I always carry a camera bits and bobs that I need, you know, extra batteries, um, cable release. What else do we carry? That uh, polarizer I talked about. Yeah. Don't need it very often, but uh, I even have, though I haven't used it in a, well, let's see, what do we got? Oh, I do have a filter. This is a Singray variable neutral density filter. It's their 10 stop. Okay. And I've not used it much. I find it, I'm still getting a lot of color shift when I do yeah. you know, a lot of uh, – do a really long exposure. Then I keep a little bit of – few tools for my tripod mm -hmm. here, wrenches, Allen wrenches. And obviously I have then uh, my uh, 
SanDisk uh, cards in there, whatever they are, the uh, both the compact flash and the uh, uh, SD cards in right. here. So I've got a whole bunch, uh, 8 gig and 32 gig cards. Yeah, because you're, shoot, you're shooting with a D800, which is a 36 megapixel camera, so having some extra cards. I am. I, I find yeah. it's almost, if I'm on a single day trip, one card generally lasts, a 32 gigabyte card lasts me most of the day. Uh, but if I'm out for longer, then I, I end up needing those others. And then I've got an orange bag, and I use this to carry uh, hiking essentials. And uh, what do we carry in here? I've got heat packs in case, uh, you know, it's freezing out there and I feel like I'm going to lose my fingers. Then it's time <laughs> to break out those. Um, oh, yeah, this is a bit of gear I live by. Uh, this is a basic filter for my water bottle, takes out the sediment. And the other one here that I, I use all the time is my SteriPen. And Steri that, pen. Um, yeah, it, it cleans the water for me using a UV light. Does that really work? It's fabulous. You know, I had Giardi a couple of times using regular filters that had broken on me, and I've not had any issues in the last uh, six years of using a SteriPen. So it's, I, I've heard about that, and it's, they do work very well, Mike. So what you they just cup, you just scoop water out of the creek, and yep. then how do you shine the, that light on it? What I don't understand this. Well, you take the top off, you push the button. And then when I submerse it into the water, the contact points are, are connected and uh, it, be, it lights up the bottle for 90 seconds while I swirl it in that one liter of water. And at the end of it, it is good to drink, assuming that the water is clear. If it has a lot of sediment in it, then it won't, uh, it won't be drinkable. So you don't have to boil it. You just use that. Exactly. And it's so lightweight and it's wonderful for clear water place like Rocky Mountain National Park. This is this is the device, though. You do have to have a backup just in case the batteries fail. I have extra batteries or if the device breaks in a fall, you know, I have uh, tablets that I can use as a last uh, resort, but they taste awful. And you usually have to wait like four to six hours before the water's drinkable. That's incredible. I've never I've never seen that. Yeah. And so I. I I usually can hike with just one water bottle and uh, fill up its streams and lakes along the way. Uh, next, you know, obviously I have a compass. You have to have the old-fashioned compass. It's nice and lightweight. I have had them break on me or point the wrong direction, but mostly you can trust them. Uh, earplugs, obviously. Earplugs. They're not for sleeping. They're for the high winds. Oh. You start to get ear earaches up in the tundra. Um, from, the, from the wind? Not from the noise, but from the wind going into your ears? The wind. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I would never thought of that. The winds get really intense up there. You see, this is why we like seeing other people's bag, because no one we've had on before has talked about the SteriPen or the earplugs because of the wind. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you know, you learn all these little tricks over years of uh, yeah. being out in the wilderness. And, you know, during those early years, I would take notes every time I came back from a trip. What was missing? What was missing? And uh, usually on the outside of my pack, I have uh, extra gloves and hats. And I, what I've done is I've attached um, little D-rings to them. Okay. And so these just clip on a carabiner and uh, make it really fast and easy to switch in and out. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm, when I start off on a hike, I'm cold. So I have them on. And then 10 minutes later, they go back in my pack. I get above the trees. The wind starts blowing. I put them back on. It's uh, really nice and easy. Um, oh, let's see. I've got a little rain jacket in there at the moment for Very the windbreaker. Important. Yeah. Um, let me get the top. Oh, got another on section. the top of my bag, right up at the top, I have a mesh sack. I don't know if you can... See if I can get it into the picture here. Yep, I saw it a second ago. Time it right, yeah. Uh, but this mesh bag inside of it, I carry my spot messenger. This is that right. satellite device. Uh, a lot of people complain about these because they have trouble getting a signal if they're not facing upright on top of your bag. And so by adding a mesh bag with a few carabiners, it works great. I've used them for like 
oh, seven or eight years now and, and have had almost no trouble with them at all. Um, I still got more stuff in here. I got... <laughs> Obviously, everyone carries a shovel with them, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the first <laughs> shovel we've seen in a camera bag. Well, part of the reason is it's currently winter here in the mountains. And so as a safety precaution, I always keep a shovel with me during the winter in case there's an avalanche. I could dig someone out. Or if I get stuck in the mountains and can't get back, I can uh, create a snow cave and uh, you know save myself that way. Do you have a shovel in your backpack there, Jim, uh, Tim? No, I can I I keep one in my car, but that's about it. I don't even do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not in New York where we yeah. do actually get snow. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and I've got the blue bag. Uh, this has a shovel and toilet paper. I won't explain what it's for. Okay. <laughs> we we got that. <laughs> uh, let's see. In one of the pouches here, I carry park regulations. And so that's a printout of the actual laws regarding a still photography in the national park. Because occasionally I'll be stopped by a ranger who says, oh, you can't do this, you know. And I pull it out and talk to them and show them, and then they're usually just fine okay. after that. Or I just say, may I speak with your boss? And that usually clears it up quickly. Um, oh, I, I got a whole other bag here. Let's see. Obviously, I have a headlamp. Yeah, uh, you know, to use at night. I actually have a second headlamp in my first aid kit that I use just in case that one breaks, because I'm often I'm so often out at night. In fact, I've hiked probably three quarters of the trails in Rocky Mountain National Park in the dark, and we've got 350 miles of trails. Dang! This is my food bag. Um, always the blue one is the food bag, and I usually have granola bars and fig bars, and uh, I also have uh, endurance gel. That I keep in there. Okay. Uh, that runners, you know, a lot of runners use that. Runners, yeah. extreme athletes. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, and I, I typically use the V V Fuel, which was developed here in Estes Park for endurance runners. And anything else? Oh, this should have been in my other bag, but duct tape. Don't go anywhere without it. And more often than not, the duct tape ends up on my heels. Uh, it stops blisters. On your actual heel. Yeah, so if I start to feel like my boot is rubbing in a, anywhere okay. off, off in the heel, I just tape up, tape them up, and I'm usually good to go for another six hours. Yeah, um, I think that's just about it, other than ibuprofen, allergy medicine, hand cleaner, lip balm, um, and uh, some Any kind of like bear spray or anything like that? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Most of the bears are hanging out here in the town. In the park, you don't really need. Right, they're looking I for the food. Run into yeah. <laughs> and then well, I also have my water bottle on the outside, and you may have noticed it's upside down. Yep. And so I carry it in the winter upside down in the outside pack of my bag. And the reason is, is that ice tends to form at the where the air is at the top. Oh. And so if I have it right side up, it forms right up by the mouth, and I can't get the water out. That's a cool oh. trick. So if I have it upside down, then it, uh, yeah, then it's usually drinkable for a lot longer period before it freezes. Yeah. That's an interesting one. So. Would not have known that. And you're right. You're going out there in the cold weather where you're in sub freezing temperatures. It, it may freeze on you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, Eric, yeah. thank you for sharing what's in your bag. That was that was very interesting. A lot of things I've never seen in a camera, in a, you know, normal camera bag. So. Yeah, and there's usually a lot of ski gear. But, in there as well all waxes and things like that but yeah very good thank you a little different